Okay, recording is on. Let's take a moment, please, to pray, and then we'll get started. May I request uh, somebody to please pray with us, and we can start. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful day. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life that you've given to us. Lord, as we are here to learn more about your word and how we can expand it as we fulfill the Great Commission, Lord, we are here calling upon your blessing to be poured upon our pastor to continue in that anointing of teaching and educating and expanding for your own kingdom. Lord, I also pray that we not only hear but also be doers, because the Bible says that we, it is not good for a man to only be a hearer and not a doer of the word. Lord, we do pray that those of our kids, brothers and sisters who have not joined, they also join in peace. I do pray in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and we say, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone for joining the class, our course on media and technology. And uh, we've been talking a little bit uh, each time on uh, different aspects of the, um, we've been now talking about digital equipment, software, hardware that we could use. And so we're going to continue from where we paused last week. Let me share the screen. Yeah, um, so we, we've covered all this. And we came to the um, section on uh, uh, video equipment, where we are about to, we'll start from there. We covered uh, all of this information on uh, audio equipment and podcasting. So we kind of introduced a little bit on video production uh, last week. Uh, there's a lot that we can do in video production. You, know, you can think about so many things, uh, right from, of course, the live stream of our Sunday services to doing, um, uh, you know, we do five minute, short five minute devotionals. Uh, we used to do 20 minute teaching, and uh, we, we can also do short documentaries. We can capture. Uh, videos of uh, testimonies, share that online. So many, so many, so many different things. Uh, we are working on trying to do some short films, which are like short five-minute films that um, that 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 address a particular theme or a topic, or communicates something. So there's a lot that we can do in video production. So generally. Uh, you know, uh, I, and I'm not necessarily getting into the exact equipments that we need. You would need uh, one or more cameras, obviously, video cameras. Uh, you could use portable cameras uh, if you are outdoor recording sort of things. Or sometimes we use these portable cameras even that's connected in our sun uh, during our Sunday services. It's fixed in certain places where uh, it's not easy to you know for people to stand and hold a uh, actual video camera we make use of these gopro camera and put it there so that it can keep recording live action and so on you need a tripod microphones external microphones uh, mics with shields or wireless mics that you know usually people put on there now if if, if, if a person is speaking or acting or singing uh, usually acting or speaking we use these wireless microphones and uh, there are several options when we think about the background, this, what, what is referred to as a set. Uh, the simplest one um, is what we, what's called as a green screen. So basically, it's just a green screen, literally what it is. And uh, what happens is when they shoot the person or the action behind against the green screen, they can replace the green screen with other backgrounds. So literally, they you know they would say everything that is green be replaced by this image. So that means you know that the, the person speaking shouldn't wear anything green, or you know because everything that's green is going to be replaced by, um, by the image that they superimpose. So 
um, you know, in our early days, uh, we used the green screen a lot. Uh, we didn't have a proper set, like we didn't have any actual physical background. So I, I would go into a room that had this green screen, and I would sit in front of it, and I record the sermons. And then they would put something in the background uh, to make it look nice. Uh, they replay uh, so uh, that used to be the way we used, we used to do it and you know sometimes uh, we, we still can do use this if just to make it easy uh, in terms of you don't have to actually have to set up you know the back stage the, the set or the decor just sit in front of a green screen should it replace the green with any other picture make it look nice so uh, uh, green screen uh, along with some very basic lighting is a very easy way to get started uh, you do, so all you need is a soundproof room a camera or a few cameras and this basic lights and you can record very nice good video uh, programs and uh, the the video person the video editor the person editing it can will just replace the green screen with uh, whatever they see fit for that so that's an easy way to get started and um, in terms of lighting you know nowadays we have these led lights where you can actually adjust the brightness the warmth even the 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 the, sh the color lighting can be adjusted you could have color lighting coming forth uh, you know different colors so on so uh, it, it's made made things a lot more easier you can buy the led lighting uh, or rent them use them for part of it and then there's a reflector kit that just reflects light to make sure light falls properly on the subject, on the person preaching, and so on. They're just for you to know that these are these are the kinds of things that go into uh, doing a video recording. The other things, um, like what's known as a gimbal, let's um, uh, if it's uh, if it's not on a physical tripod, there's a handheld thing that they use. Uh, to hold the camera straight uh, uh, and uh, of course you have you need the editing software um, your, your decent computer uh, and uh, you can have uh, captions that are put on your video that people can see um, high quality memory cards are important capture cards um, uh, uh, you know so um, this is for you to capture the live stream video and then take it to your computer uh, battery uh, uh, so uh, battery power if there's no uh, walls wall power source you need a battery power so just some things to keep in mind if you're putting together some video equipment to do some video programs um, I've also shared a basic configuration here uh, you know, of course, depending on how much you have, or are willing to spend, or so on, you could buy higher-end uh, computers and so on. But this is something simple enough uh, for editing, uh, video editing, uh, um, uh, the the video programs. So typically, you want good RAM, so you'd be on the higher end of 32 GB. That's good, at least 16 GB. But if you have 32, that's very good for the people working. You need a good strong processor uh, um, for a more cores. That's that's good. You need a lot of storage. So uh, I've just given you uh, basic specifications. You can always do better than this uh, if you're buying a computer. Uh, High-end graphics card is important. Of course, the operating system and a good screen for them to uh, work on. Right. So these are just some things to so keep in mind, uh, you know, and of course these things will keep getting better and I'm sure there will always be better hardware available uh, as we go along uh, for this. So think about this. I'm just sharing this information with you. So if you are planning to do short videos, um, um, uh, other video programs, this is kind of the equipment that you need to get started. Uh, a little bit about live streaming. Live streaming has become quite common these days. Um, almost, uh, I would say, many, many churches today uh, do live stream their services. Uh, of course, we do, you know, there are some very easy ways to do it. You, through YouTube and uh, through other platforms that you could live stream. Uh, you could even have uh, something going through Zoom or 
Google Classroom, or things like that. You could make what's happening in a particular setting available to people uh, in many other places. They can connect and watch the program. So however you wish, um, uh, yeah, you know, you could live stream and open up what you're doing to a wider audience uh, from anywhere in the world. They can connect and listen to what is being shared uh, and so on. Uh, just to share a few things of what you know we've done or we are doing. Uh, uh, when you're having live stream, it's nice to have live chat that people can respond or share their thoughts on what's happening or interact. Um, you may you know wish to have a countdown to your live stream, builds a sense of anticipation. Okay, you know in the next start of five minutes ahead of the program starting time and come down to it or something like that. Um, also. It's useful to record your live stream so that you can share that live stream recording at other times. So you know that that whole live stream is recorded and can be available to people. Um, uh, you could uh, the advantage of using some of these live streaming platforms is that uh, they they have what we call as content delivery networks, which means um, they 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 offer the content in proximity to the people where they're watching from. So their experience is much better. So they handle all of that, uh, YouTube and so on. So the content is delivered from the, the proximity, closest uh, network uh, to where people are watching from, whichever part of the world. And um, also, when you use some of these uh, streaming platforms, you get analytics. You get information on you know, how many people watched, who's watching from which part of the world they are watching, so on. So that's useful uh, when you use some of these live streaming platforms. So generally, when you said doing a live streaming setup, uh, this is just an overview of uh, the setup. I'll just go over it just for you to understand. Uh, and you know, we're not asking anybody to learn and memorize this. It's just for us to understand. So of course, we have audio and video input. So you'll have multiple uh, cameras, multiple sound audio inputs um, they go to you know the, the regular connection we'll, we'll look at it in the next picture but they come to what is known as a switch a mixer and a switcher uh, so we use a black magic video switcher that means you'll have multiple cameras and at any point you can you know you're showing one particular shot or something coming through one particular camera and of course sometimes you can mix them also and show multiple cameras on the screen but generally you'll switch between cameras so that's what this black magic video switcher does so there's a person sit you know deciding which which part which camera shot to show to the live streaming audience sometimes you'll also be relaying back into the uh, auditorium so um, that also can happen but this one is for the live streaming switcher that goes out to what is an or called as an encoder so that means this encoder uh, prepares the audio video content to be pushed out uh, to uh, to the internet. Now we have two options. We can do it using software or we can use doing hardware. There are pros and cons to this. Uh, hardware generally would be faster, uh, but it also means you need to configure your hardware. So uh, many you know, generally people may opt to use the software approach and we are using us we, we have both options uh, uh, available with us but we normally on a regular Sunday we use just use the software uh, option to encode so basically we have a, a, a OBS uh, software running on uh, a Mac uh, and so that does the encoding for us as well um, and then that's pushed out through our router switch to the internet so that goes to the internet and basically it goes to your streaming platforms so for example from this computer through the internet we push it to uh, all people's church Bangalore YouTube channel simultaneously we may uh, you know push it to our Facebook uh, channel or, or on the other streaming through our website etc so um, uh, so, so here we actually have a server set up that does this multicasting. So we have a, a, a server. So we push it to the server, and the server does the multicasting. Now, you don't need this server if you're doing only one channel. If you're just pushing it directly to YouTube and you're only using YouTube, then that's fine. You go straight from here to YouTube. 
But if you want to do multicasting, which is doing multiple channels at the same time, then you you, you kind of set up a server here in in the middle uh, to do that multicasting for you. So we we have we have this server set up, which simultaneously we uh, put it out on multiple channels, and then people come to whichever channel they want, and they see it. So this is a high level uh, overview. So if you go back to um, this setup that we have, so this is mixing the audio for the auditorium that is the in-house or front of house console. All the audio comes in here to a broadcast console, which then goes the audio and then the video goes to our uh, uh, streaming Mac that runs the OBS software. Uh, so this Mac, streaming Mac, also receives all the video input um, uh, and uh, uh, the, from the video switcher, uh, the, the Blackmagic switcher. And then this then encodes everything and sends it out to uh, be sent on live stream. Uh, this looks a little bit more complicated, but the point of this uh, picture is that you can have multiple image so camera sources. So let's say here we have about five camera sources. They're all coming in. Uh, they're going to the switcher. And from the switcher, uh, we are going to the, uh, where is this MacBook? Yeah, this, this is the Mac, um, uh, which of course the, the person doing the switching is able to see, you know, what, what is he switching to? Uh, and sorry, this is the this is the encoder. Uh, this is the inter, uh, presenter. So all of that is um, the switcher that is switched comes to this um, uh, encoder, and that is then streamed out. Uh, so from the encoder, we can, we can stream it out to. Uh, so this is the hardware encoder which we could use if we needed to. This is a software uh, encoder and that is streamed out to the internet. So basically the idea is you can have multiple cameras coming in, multiple audios coming in, the switcher does you know, selection, it's encoded and then sent out to be streamed. And uh, it's also going out to various inputs. So we have an LED wall, so all of this is displayed on the LED wall as well. Um, uh, that also happens. Uh, people can see it uh, at the same time. They can uh, watch what's being shown, uh, and you can you know what what whatever is mixed can be sent out to various outputs. The LED wall. Uh, if you have a uh, people watching on screens, they can also see it. So uh, you don't have to memorize this, but just to get an idea that uh, you know th these are the equipments you need for a video production. So I've listed uh, a live stream production. So I've listed this here, uh, the OBS software that we use, um, the audio video switcher, uh, the encoder software, the RTMP server. This is the Nginx server that actually distributes, does multicasting uh, to various uh, so uh, outputs. So that's uh, just available for us. Um, uh, the so the 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 point here, uh, what we do is at, at least what we do is we actually hire our cameras. So on a given Sunday, we may use multiple cameras, and these are all hired. So uh, we I think we have one or two of our own, but we also hire these cameras. And I've just given a costing here per Sunday uh, with. Uh, Per camera, we generally uh, this is what we, it costs us in Indian rupees. Uh, the LED wall, this is what it costs us in Indian rupees. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, uh, what's involved. Okay. Um, in addition to this, of course, nowadays people are spending uh, time and attention on the whole stage. Uh, you know, how do you set up your stage? Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, what could the background be? 
So for us at this present time, we just use a big LED wall at the back on the stage and that enables us to change the graphics and make the stage look good. The rest of it is all playing uh, uh, with instruments and so on. Um, but of course you could, you know, you could do all kinds of things with LED walls on the stage. Uh, it's up to, you know, up to each local church what they are comfortable with. But I've just given some information here where you could go and see, you know, get ideas of what different people are doing. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, uh, there is the software uh, to control the graphics that are displayed on the LED background, uh, as well as uh, software for controlling the stage lighting. So this is what we use. Uh, so I've just shared that with you. So you you can use control the lighting, turn lightings on and off, dim, bright, and also control the graphic that comes up on the LED panel on the stage. So this is what happens uh, on the stage production. So if you're interested, you can explore these things further. One last point here about um, uh, the live stream related matter is, again, we are not doing this, but we are working on it or moving towards it, which is we could actually do live audio translation of us of our services. So if the service is in English and you need or would like to have people uh, connected in other, you know, other languages, you could actually do live audio translation uh, of the sermons. Uh, you could use live interpreters, uh, or you could even nowadays use AI-powered interpreters. Um, this live interpreters actually that was started way back in the 1960s, I think, mm, when uh, when the Yonggi Cho, Doctor Paul Yonggi Cho in Seoul, Korea, he started doing that. Uh, he would have uh, you know, a lot of visitors coming into his services. So they had live interpreters sitting at the back interpreting and they provided headsets and wireless headsets to people and they would actually sit and listen in their own language live. So he's kind of, he was kind of a pioneer in that. Um, uh, um, and then many other churches you know, started doing that. And that same live can now uh, be translated to live streaming uh, what is interesting is that nowadays even AI-powered interpreters can uh, be used. So we're kind of looking at this solution, uh, AI-powered, uh, but trying to set up our own so that we don't have to pay fees for every language we choose. So we're going to create our own platform so that we can uh, it, uh, you know, translate in live into many languages, uh, have our own platforms and stream live into that. So this is to give you an idea of uh, what can be done with digital media. Uh, let me pause here and see if there are any questions and then we'll go forward. Any questions uh, on anything we've covered so far? Uh, okay, so now I'm going to change subject a little bit and uh, share a few things. Uh, on uh, software platforms that uh, that are useful for church, right? So this is our next chapter, software platforms. So uh, it is good, it is good if, if um, as a church, um, you can leverage um, software platforms for, for, for a lot of the work that, that, that needs to be done. So I'm just sharing some of the things that we do. Uh, of course, uh, for our regular office work, you know, our, our church staff use uh, the um, typical office products, uh, Word and email, uh, spreadsheets, and so on. So we do have both options. You could use Microsoft products or Google tools, so on. Uh, for accounting, we use uh, uh, an, a local Indian accounting software. It's, it's called Tally, uh, uh, but you know, uh, and, and and of course, it's customized to follow Indian rules, Indian uh, taxation rules, and other things. So that's why we use that. So, uh, uh, in different parts of the world, they would have different accounting software that is tailored for the uh, um, regulations for that country. So it's good that 
you know, uh, as a church, you use something that's relevant and useful. Uh, I'll just show you some, some of the, uh, actually all of these are open source products. Uh, so you could um, download and use them. So for people management, so as a church, uh, of course, you would want to manage your staff people information. Uh, for that, right now we're using an, a free open source product called Rock RMS. Mm, uh, our plan is to move away from it and build our own, so we're working on that. Um, uh, but um, for now, we are, we are using Rock RMS, and you could um, you could also consider using it. Uh, one minute, let me just uh, try to show this to you. Uh, I, I, I think I may have shared this with you in the past, but let me just try to share it with you. Share some of these things with you so you get an idea uh, of... Um, so, uh, so this is our, our installation of uh, the church management system that we are using. So it's basically uh, uh, this uh, Rock RMS, that product that we've installed for ourselves. So typically we can log in uh, and, and uh, as soon as I log in, uh, I can see people's birthdays today. So these are the people who have birthdays today. So, uh, you know, uh, we could wish them. Now, uh, uh, sometimes I do, I log in and I do this, I send them a greeting. But we have um, a, a member care team uh, who will be who use this every day. So they log in, they see all the people who are there, uh, they call them, wish them, speak to them, and so on. And then, you know, of course, you could go into, you can find, look for people. Um, so if I just look for myself, you know, you can search. Uh, you'll find all the people in your database. There's a lot of people with the name Ashish here. So if I just look for myself, uh, then I can get, you know, so it, it gives me, uh, it gives my, in, my information and my family's information, right? So you can look at uh, the person's information. Uh, you can uh, add comments to them. So when people, uh, you know, uh, sorry, uh, or the interactions that you've had with them, uh, you can add some comment. So I can, you know, say, uh, call, uh, so I'll just say this is a test message. Call and spoke with Ashish today. He is doing fine, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You know, whatever, et cetera. Uh, you can type a note. So you record a note, right? So that, so our, our member kid team, as they call people, they record this kind of message that they called and spoke to that person and uh, very, well, whatever. So those interactions are recorded here. So when we go back and pull up somebody's information, we see what has happened over time, right? So I'm just uh, saving this thing. Of course, I can delete it. Um, um, and then um, other, in, other, other parts of their interactions with the church are recorded here. Um, their documents. So when we when we give them membership documents, when we give them the water baptism documents, those things are attached here. Uh, of course, in, in my case, there's nothing uh, on, on it, so it's all blank. But you know, those documents are there. Uh, when they became membership, that information is here. So that's about what we use. We don't use all the other things that are available. If they are by the college applicant, then that information shows up. Now, so I just did a test, so that's why it shows up. But actually. Uh, you know, it's uh, so uh, all of that in, uh, kept in this church management system. So literally, and then we can see reports here. So I can, uh, you know, I can see report. We can see reports on, uh, you know, who are people in Bangalore, who are Bangalore, in Bible College, who are children, uh, first time visitors, and so on. So we create various reports on this data that we could then look at, and. Um, um, our, uh, our member care team, uh, when they want to look at uh, certain, you know, uh, um, 
uh, reports to call people to send them birthday greetings and so on. So they use these reports uh, from here uh, uh, and uh, you know interact with people. So having this kind of a system um, and also our Bible college students uh, data is also in our church management system, but we have, we've, uh, we've actually moved it to a separate place. Um, similarly on, on this rock RMS as well. So having something like this uh, is, is useful in managing all the information of your people and as well as, you know, recording what's happening with them if as you interact with them, talk to them and so on. So now we started actually using this from 2018. So it's been about six years. Um, uh, we are planning to move away from it, not because it, the product is bad, but um, um, uh, it just, uh, we, we feel that, uh, I mean, when we wanted to make changes to it, customize it for our own use, our pay, um, uh, that, we, that those were some challenges. So we felt, okay, let's build our own to manage the data. So, you know, once we build our own, we'll, we'll move all the data into our own system. But this is is free, it's open source. So it I think it's a great um, product uh, being free uh, and, and something that uh, we could all, uh, I mean, you could use. The next product that we are using uh, is or what we uh, call as uh, a human resource management pro software. So this is mainly for our church staff. It means for all the staff, uh, staff and consultants. So uh, for all the staff who work for church uh, and for all the consultants, the people who work uh, hourly basis and so on, uh, they, uh, they have access to the human resource uh, management portal. So I'm just going to log in. Uh, I, I am an administrator here, so I can see a lot more information than uh, the general staff. So I, I, I uh, so uh, for the general staff, they will not see all these things, uh, but I get this, you know. So um, they will see a, a few uh, links on there and fewer information on their dashboard. But as an administrator, I can see all of this. But most uh, common, the reason we use this is for people to report their time. So, you know, we, we keep, uh, for example, last week, my timesheet. So everybody who's who's doing work, they report, have, they have to report their time. So I also report my time, what I did last week, um, based on the actual work I, you know, what projects I did, what was my activity, what was my hours, uh, I submit my timesheet every week. Uh, so like that, uh, all the church stuff, uh, report their time here. Then we have our ad admin person. So I submitted on the third, 10th of March. Uh, our admin person uh, will approve it or you know check it and approve it. So basically, this all our staff and all our consultants report their time sheets. Then uh, we also use this for leave applications. So if I want to apply for leave, uh, I have to go here and I have to apply for leave. Uh, sorry, apply for leave here, right? So it's all recorded here, so um, we know, you know who took leave when, and again, it goes through an approval process, our HR person will approve, um, and so on. So these are two primary things that we are using this for. We, there are other options. You can do performance reviews um, uh, in this system. We, uh, of course, we also store all our uh, staff information here. Uh, I don't want to show that, but uh, we could also do performance rev reviews within the system. Uh, we can also manage recruitment within the system. So we we, uh, we we were leveraging this a little bit, but we don't use it heavily these days. Um, the recruitment. Uh, and performance reviews, we haven't started using it yet. Mainly, we use it for time and leave, but there are other features that you could uh, use this for. Um, so again, this is a free product. It's an open source product. Uh, you can have it. You know, you can have it set up for your your organization, your church, and this way, you know, it's it's a very good way for everybody to feel accountable, report their work. 
uh, report their time. Uh, we uh, can record leaves uh, when people are on leave uh, and so on. And so it helps us uh, manage uh, manage our staff well. Okay, so um, let me. Uh, I will I will show one more thing maybe. Uh, so let me just again share my screen. I'll just show you one more thing and we'll we'll pause. Don't want to overwhelm you with too much information one day. So um, there are a lot of other things that we use. Uh, so I will um, let me just or maybe two more. Uh, so we use, again all of these are open source products. So we we use what is called as a repository. Uh, we haven't like. Uh, forced people to use it, but our, uh, we've started work on it. Uh, it's a free product called Bookshelf, and where we try, uh, our goal is to document all our um, uh, standard operating procedures, so on and so forth, in a central place. Uh, otherwise, all these information documents, they just reside on people's computers everywhere, you know, uh, or in emails. So the bookshelf that we have, it's almost structured like a, you know, it, it looks like a bookshelf. So there are different shelves, and within uh, each of these shelves, you can create multiple books, and um, um, and then you can upload uh, documents, uh, uh, whatever that you need uh, specific to that area, so that um, it's all in one place, and at any point in time. Uh, we can go and retrieve information from there. So this is um, what we, we call this a repository. It's actually it's running an open source product called Bookshelf, and this is where we doc, you know, record or store all our basically our documents, and it's a place for us to document our work procedures and things of that nature, so people can go and have access to it. Um, another software product that we use uh, is called uh, Projects. Uh, so this is primarily used by our IT team uh, uh, to manage, you know, various projects and things that we're doing. Again, there's an open source project uh, product called Open Project. And uh, oh, sorry, sorry, I got to share this by mistake. I Sorry. Okay. So um, we uh, we use this to manage different projects. And so, for example, you know, we um, we're going through a little bit of testing here on. Uh, um, on uh, life coaching. So we report issues and tasks here. We are also working on our church app release. A lot of work is happening right now. So um, this all tasks go here. So this is primarily used by our uh, IT team and people working on things where we you know, uh, uh, use uh, report tasks and issues and so on. Uh, so that's another thing that we use, right? So let me see if I need to show you anything else. Yeah. Let me pause here. So we, um, so we have um, talked about a different software platforms that we use um, as an organization, right? just to help us facilitate, coordinate work. Uh, and I'm sharing this with you. I'm not saying, you know, everybody has to use all of this, um, but I'm just sharing this with you so that uh, if you're interested at any point in time, you could go and use these, any of these products. Uh, remember, uh, you know, all, uh, all, everything I've showed you today, uh, uh, these are free open source products. So you don't, you can go download them from the links that we've shared and you can have somebody set it up for your church or your ministry, and uh, you can use it, okay? Uh, maybe I'll just mention a few more and then we'll stop for today. 
Um, we so we talked about rock RMS. We talked about Orange HRM, which is for staff management. Uh, I showed you Open Project, which is for our managing various projects. So, you know, different people who are running projects, they will set it up and manage their projects here. Um, we um, we uh, for all our church websites, uh, we use uh, a content management system called Joomla. Uh, it's a, again an open source product. So our example, our apcw.org website, uh, our Bible College website, is all built using Joomla. Uh, so uh, it's a free product. Uh, you can download it, uh, customize it, set it up the way you want it for your website, and have it running. Uh, of course, there are other options available uh, or other content management. So there are numerous content content free content management systems um, that you could uh, use WordPress is again one of the major ones that people use uh, aside from Joomla uh, and then there are several others as well uh, we use Joomla simply because uh, for us we felt it was uh, most appropriate for us uh, for our purposes and uh, yeah so we've been using it for several years now um, we also have uh, our church app that is built. Um, now we are actually rebuilding our church app, so it will be released. You know, many of you will get an email, uh, maybe in about two weeks from now, about a new version of our church app being released. Uh, so this points. This was actually our old old church app, which is no longer available. We used to use uh, a service provider called Custom Church Apps. Um, uh, but this company got bought over by somebody else, and so we pulled out our church app, and we decided to build it ourselves. Uh, so that work is almost ready, and we're going to launch that. Uh, but the church app is very useful. People can access content right on their phones and so on. So that's something uh, that's, that's good. Okay, let me pause here. I don't want to overwhelm you today with uh, so much of information. Uh, you're all with me so far, or you got lost somewhere? I think it's okay. We are still alive. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know because uh, it's not. This is not uh, theology, but <laughs> but uh, this is what is actually happening uh, in uh, behind the scenes, and you know, uh, running uh, running the church and coordinating things. Um, this is what uh, we use. Okay, so um, we we have a church app that we are building. We're working on. Uh, we have a small IT team of uh, I think uh, five or six people uh, who are working, and uh, they, they 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 take care of all of these things uh, that I was showing you. They manage all these things, and uh, I just guide them or ask. You know, tell them what to do or give them some direction. Uh, but our IT team uh, does all the work. Um, and I think overall, it has helped us. You know, so sometimes people say, people might think, you know, you're a church, you're a ministry. Uh, why should you be using all this software? And why do you need all this? Well, it helps us become more efficient in our work. Uh, uh, it helps us manage data uh, much better because uh, we have to manage data. You know, let's say we've, uh, in 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 our church management system, uh, I'm I'm estimating. I don't know the actual count, but I'm estimating we have about three thousand people, like in Bangalore. We may have about twenty thousand people, like all across India, whom we directly or indirectly serve. Uh, so obviously we have to manage the data. They may say my address has changed, my phone number has changed, my, you know, whatever. You know, they may, all that. So we have to go and update it somewhere. So having a system in place uh, makes it very useful. People can update it, keep the data updated, and helps us reach out to all of them. Okay. Um, so let's go for a quick break, and uh, we'll come back at eleven o'clock. And I'll just I'll just show you a few more things. 
uh, software platforms. Uh, uh, my goal is not to overwhelm you, but just to give you an idea that all these options are there. And if any time, as your church is growing, as your ministry is growing, you want to use any one of these things, you can go and use it. Uh, we have intentionally chosen to use open source products. You know, that means we don't pay any licenses for it. You just download it, have somebody set it up for you and use it. Uh, so any church, any organization can use the same products. Okay. So we'll come back at 11 and uh, I'll just cover a few more products and then we'll, we'll close for the day. Okay. So let's come back after the break. Thank you. <laughs> 